so that you can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, coming back to what you were discussing yesterday regarding our fasting and everything. If you look at Islam, so many people they think about Islam to be only rituals. As long as you do the rituals, that is all. No. But Islam is the religion which is encompassing every aspect of my life and your life. How you eat, how you drink, how you sleep, even how you go to the toilet. Okay. In the time of Umar ibn Khattab, even the man asked him, he said, he's a Jewish person, he said, you Muslims, said Muhammad Tell me everything that you have to do with the life. He said, yes. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us everything until even how to go to toilet. He showed us how to go to toilet. The man was so amazed that this is the religion that even show you how to even to go and ease yourself. He could not believe it. Okay. So, so many times, it seems you pray our uh, five daily salats and so forth. But has it caught any kind of impact, influence on us? Immediately you finish uh, performing our salat. What's the first thing? The first thing that you can find is the unity. It says stand together, come together as one woman. That is the first thing. Okay. And when you, when you repent, repent, Allah said, you should repent all of you together. Because when you repent together, there is no any kind of evil things that will be going on around. So many times you focus on one particular aspect of Islam, and that is it. A salat is everything. So Allah teaches us how to live your life, how to be kind, how to show the best man, how to care for one another. So Allah teaches us the main aim, the universal aim of Al Islam. What is the main aim of Islam? It came to preserve the life of people. That's the first. So in Islam, you do not hurt someone. Until Prophet had said, no one should choose a knife or anything which is sharp to point at his brother or sister when he or she is talking to that particular person. He said, because maybe sometimes a place shaitan will make your hands slip it can hurt that particular person. So for example, somebody having a knife, you don't go and make a joke with someone, and say, oh, don't we'll do this for you, and so forth, and say, I'm making a joke. No. Because maybe while you are doing that, the person may like to uh, avoid it. And where you are, this is going to, it goes and then hurt that particular person. So as a Muslim, you do not do some things like that completely, you do not do anything like that. It is out of order. Now, Professor Sam has said, when you are 
holding anything which is sharp, make sure that you cover it, especially the point of it, so that it will not hurt somebody. All this is to preserve the life. So in Islam, it is forbidden for people to go and kill someone. Muslims, you do not kill someone because the person is not a Muslim. No. That is not our duty. Our duty is to proclaim the message. That's all. If Allah wished, He would have made everybody a believer. That is it. Like, as He made the angels, none of them is disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to be. So preservation of life is one of the main aim of Islam. And secondly, preservation of religion. To preserve religion. For example, if a Muslim goes to a certain place, and the people are worshipping something, for example, in a temple or a church or a synagogue, for example, it is forbidden for Muslims to go and destroy that. Even if Muslims are controlling and ruling that particular place, it's haram for Muslims to go and destroy that. You do not destroy it. Okay. So preservation of religion is very, very important. Now, it comes to the intellect. Allah Akbar. To preserve one's mind is so important in Islam. And hence he said, do not drink alcohol, do not take drugs, for example, in anything that will ferment the mind, Islam forbid it completely. Islam forbid this thing to happen completely. Okay. And then it comes to al That means the honor of the individual. To preserve the honor of the individual, meaning you do not go and accuse people innocent. Innocent people, you go and then you accuse them wrong. That you, you did this one, that, and well, the person did not do it. Okay. And with that, you do not backbite that particular individual. You don't lie against that individual. And you do not also go and do something behind that particular individual which is not good. Therefore, Professor Nassim has said, the best du'a that you can make is to do it behind someone, your brother or sister, when the person is not there, and you make the du'a for that person. He said that's the best du'a you can make. He said because when you make that du'a, the angels, Allah sent the angel, and that angel said, and unto you be the same. SubhanAllah, that means the best du'a. You ask the health, prosperity, and everything for that individual, and the angel also comes and said, may you also have the same thing. So this is something which is very good for a believer to do it. And another preservation is that of the social uh, groups. When you are in a group, as, as a, a social being, you are a social being, you cannot be isolated by yourself. A person cannot be as an island by himself or herself. It's not possible. You will not feel good. Yes. So, how you deal with the people in the society? When you care for the people, young, old, men, women, rich, poor, you name it. That's so why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, it is who who had made you into different tribes and nations and colors. Not because of anything, so that you may know each other and you may like each other. You may respect one another. But not that you are better than this one and so forth. But he said the most 
the best of all of them is the one who is more God-fearing in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna karamaka bi'inda Allahi atqaqa. So the aim of fasting also is to gain this taqwa. That is the most important thing that you have to get. But unfortunately, so many times, the day we put it, people take it in a different ways and so forth, and hence they are even destroying lives. The lives that Islam came to preserve, because they have a certain type of an ideology, they are healing innocent people, men, women, children, you name it. Infrastructures destroying, bombing here and there. No, Islam is not like that. Islam is the most peaceful way of life, and it's a natural way of life that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala had given to me and you. So whenever you are in Islam, you are the most fortunate person. Allah has blessed you. So you should not go about painting very bad image about Islam. When you are in the group, you should behave very nice in the best way. You do not disturb someone. Don't go about disturbing somebody and so forth. No. Have a respect for everyone. And as the Prophet said, whosoever does not show respect and honor to our elders, that person hasn't got a belief. He's not a believer. And the one who does not show mercy towards our young ones also is not a believer, hasn't got a faith. So you must make sure that we do things in order for people to have peace of mind. Why is that you have to say Salaamu Alaikum the first time you see your brother or a sister? And what does that mean? It means peace be unto you. It means your life is safe with me. Your property is safe with me. Your honor is safe with me. Okay? It means that everything regarding you is safe. And he will also respond to you, Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So in this uh, dialogue, that between the brother and another one, or a sister and another person, it shows that you are a very peaceful person. You don't say salamu alaykum to someone, and then as soon as you finish, you go and say, oh, you see, that person, he or she is this and that and so on and so forth. So what's the purpose of salam? There's no meaning of that salam that you have made. So you should make it a point of duty, and it's important you meet your brother or sister, you say, salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is our duty. The next duty that we have as a believer <coughs> towards one another is to visit one another if the person is in a state of, for example, in need, maybe he's sick and so forth, and you know, and you know the place, you can go and visit that person. And when you are going, Allah sends an angels who come and Show over you. And what are they coming to do? Seeking forgiveness for you. And every step that you make, it has given you one rank up and taken away one sin from you. Every step that you are making. And they are praying for you. So a believer should be someone that whenever you are in a place, people are happy with you. And when you are not there, they will remember you and they will pray for you. This is how a believer should be. A believer should not be in a place 
whereby when you are there, people do not even want to come to you. And when you are not there, they say, oh, today we are free. It is not good. So a believer has to be the one. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make the month of Ramadan fasting more than 29 or 30 days. So that we can train ourselves. We can become the best. And after that, we come out and put it into practice. But unfortunately, sometimes we feel that fasting is only to abstain from food and drink and marital relations and so forth, and that is it. But it is more than that. So sometimes we may be fighting, and if the person is even fasting. Fighting and fasting. It doesn't go together. It doesn't go together. No. You understand? It does not. So we must make sure that you understand the essence of Islam. The main aim while we have even to fast. We must know about it. Other times, sometimes we put our cultures and our traditions to be as Islam, which is wrong. If the culture and the tradition it goes with, with the norms of Islam, Alhamdulillah. If it is not, don't say that all oh, my parents or oh, my forefathers they practice it and so forth, you think that so they will go to hell because they do that. No. That is not an argument. And that, that shouldn't be your argument. No. Because people they use the knowledge about whatever thing they used to have during that time. Isn't it? Yeah. So whatever knowledge they had, that is what they had during that time. Is the time of Prophet Allah what was their transportation? Huh? Camel, horse, and donkeys. Huh? Isn't it? Okay. Now, what, what are our transportations? Aeroplanes. Sheep. Uh -huh. Sheep, and then a train. And nowadays, even the, uh, the, they want to go, uh, what to call uh, Space. Yes, to space, isn't it? So you cannot say that, oh, because they were using uh, donkeys and so forth, so they are, all what they did is what? It's bad, it's wrong. No, that was the means they have during that time. But when the knowledge comes to you, then you must take it. Okay? All those during that time, what they were using the look at now if you go to where Arabia. Hmm? The most modern vehicles. That's what you get to over there, isn't it? Ferraris and so on and so forth, if you name it. Before it was a donkey and other things. That's what we were having during that time, isn't it? So when we have you should make use of it. And if you don't have, that is something else. So when the knowledge comes to you, don't say that, oh, even though I have understood this and that, but my parents practice it, and therefore I too have to practice it. No, you shouldn't do something like that. You must practice what Professor Allah has taught us to practice, and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us in the Holy Quran how you should shape our way of life. That is all what we have to do. Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us all pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. That's why every day you said what? If dinner, if you dinner, suratul mustaqil. Oh, Allah guide us on what? So are we on the wrong path now? Are you on the wrong path? No. But you want the Islam to make you firm on it? Because Shaitan can direct you at any time. 
Shaitan can divert a person at any time. So you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you firm on the path. This is something Muslims you should do. But there is one thing you have to bear in mind. Don't become a selfish person that you will not want to go to Al Jannah. No, no. Something which is good, tell your friends, your brothers, your neighbors, and so forth, for them also to be part of it. Yes. Not only you, if you know a certain dua and somebody doesn't know it, teach them particular dua. For example, the dua that Prophet taught his wife, Aisha anha, in the month of Ramadan, if you know it, teach someone who does not know it. Isn't it? Then what that dua says? Allahumma innaka afuun yuhibbul afwa wa afu'ana. You say that in It's something which is very good. All right? And Yesterday you spoke about Zakat al-Fitr, it's so important if, no matter anybody, even if your father, your father or your mother, if they are alive, they say very carefully, if they are alive and you are the one maintaining them, it is your duty to do what? To give Zakat al-Fitr on their behalf. On their behalf, it is your duty. Make sure that you give that zakat of bitter prayer for them. So, inshallah, when you are eating also, do not waste. Start with Bismillah and eat in front of you. Eat in front of you. Okay? It's so important. Um, don't eat with your left, eat with your right all the time. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us be among those who witness Laylatul Qadr so that all our sins will be forgiven like the day you were born. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.